Ladies and gentlemen, today I would like to add jumping functionality to our player and we will be using rigid body component. First of all, let's create a basic jump and then we can extend it and make multi jump or something like that. So we've got our player movement script, but actually I think I would like to separate this functionality. So I will create a new script and call it player jump. Walkie dokie, it's created, so let's just drag and drop it onto our player and override the changes. Let's open player jump uh, script and let's delete whatever is inside. Uh, we need to change the jumping force so that we can adjust this value in the inspector. So let's type serialize field, float and let's call it jump force maybe. And let's assign some default value to it like 10f for now. Now we need to have a reference to the rigid body. So let's type rigid body RB. Now in the awake, let's cache it like so. Now in the update, we need to know whenever the jump button has been pressed. So in that case, we need to create so-called flag. It's a bool value and it will indicate whenever we are jumping or not. So let's go back in here and type bool is jumping. And at the beginning, when we start the game, of course, we are not jumping. So we will assign the value false for now. Now in the update, we need to listen for the input. And whenever the player will press like spacebar or jump button on the pad, we want to change this variable to true. So let's do that. If input get button down and here inside the parentheses, we will add jump and whenever the player press the jump button we want to change is jumping to true and now i will show you where this comes from this is the same as get axis row so let's go back into unity let's go to edit project settings and here we've got input manager and here is the jump our get button down jump will be executed when we press spacebar on the keyboard or when we use a um, appropriate button on our pad. So this is where it comes from. And as you can see, we've got fire one, fire two, fire three as well, but we are not going to use them today. So, okay, we have input from the user. We know whenever we want to jump. So now we have to do that in the fixed update. So let's type fixed update. And here we need to check whenever is jumping, then we need to add some force to our player so it can jump up. So let's call RB and then add force. In here we need to create a new vector. So let's put new vector two. We don't want to add any force left and right because this is why we will use A and D or arrows on the uh, keyboard. That's why we'll put zero F in here. But when it comes to the Y value, we want to use um, the jump force actually. And now we need to specify one more thing after the comma. We want to use force mode because as you can see, we've got a force which will be like a constant force and we've got impulse. So I think that when we want to jump, it's like the impulse because we add some energy to our player and then there is nothing more. So let's use impulse. And actually when we add this force to the player, it means that it jumped. So we can change our flag is jumping to false again. And this is pretty much it. Looks like our jumping functionality is done. So we can go back to Unity and check this out. Now we can still move. And now when I press spacebar, we can jump and we can jump quite high. Of course, there are some settings we need to adjust so that we can um, jump a little bit better so our uh, movement is more dynamic uh, definitely we need to go into rigid body component maybe we'll increase the scale to three we, okay let's have a look let's have a look how it looks like we increase the gravity so we'll drop a little bit faster and i think it looks already much better bam okay but i don't know if you have noticed at the moment we can jump few times as many as you want. If you like that, you can keep it as it is. But I want to change it. I want to make it so you decide if you want to have like double jump, triple jump or single jump. 
So let's do that. I think that would be really nice thing to do. So in order to do that, let's go in here and create a new serialized field and let's decide how many jumps we can have. So int and let's call jump max number. And I think I will put it to two. I think that double jumps are really nice. So by default, it might be two. And of course, whenever we'll jump, we need to count how many jumps there were already. So let's type int and let's call this variable jump number. And of course, at the beginning, it will be zero. So now, whenever we jump, we want to increase this jump number variable. So here we've got our jumping. So let's go in here and say that jump number is plus plus. And there is one more thing because actually in here, we have to check if we are jumping, but moreover, we need to check if the jump number is less than jump max number. We don't want to jump more then we are allowed to. So let's check it in here. We can use a logical operator and to join the conditions. So now I will use ampersand and say that if uh, jump number is less or equal max jump number. So now we have to add functionality where we reset our jump number. And I think it should be done whenever we touch the ground or when we fall on some object. When we fall on some object or stop somewhere on some wall or whatever, then our velocity will be about zero. So that might be the point to reset our jumping count. So let's go in here and check if, and now we are checking our velocity. If it's nearly zero, then it means that we stopped. We are not falling, we are not in the air, we are somewhere, you know, that we can repeat our jump again. We can use a math uh, function because thanks to that, we will have always a positive value. It doesn't matter if we are falling or going up, it will return the positive value always. And now we are checking RB velocity Y and if this is smaller than, let's say, 1,000th, then we want to reset everything. And why did I put something like that? First of all, we're checking the velocity y. If it is nearly zero, it means we are not falling and not jumping. So in that case, we want to have our jump number equal zero. And why I didn't just put equals to like zero? Because it doesn't work with floats you never really want to compare float numbers to zero or any other number. So let's go inside this if statement and say that jump number equals zero. And of course, when it happens, it means that is jumping equals false. I think that this is pretty much everything. So let's go back into Unity and press play. We have set jump max number to two. So let's have a look. One, two, three, four. Oh, we can jump three times. Let's have a look why. We go back. Ah, okay, because we've got here a less or equal to. So let's delete the equal sign and that would make it better. So let's go back again, my mistake. And now we've got two max jump, one, two. Okay, this is fine. So let's go and one, two, ta-da, we can jump and we can jump only two times. And whenever we collide with something where our velocity will drop to about zero, then we can repeat our jump, which is fantastical. Ah, and we just re rotated. Okay, so if you don't want to rotate your player, actually, you can open your rigid body component and here you've got some constraints. So you can set freeze rotation. So even if we collide with something, we will not rotate. And this is quite handy. So let's go up, override, apply all. And actually our moving and jumping system is ready.